Yes, we have lots of sticks. Hey guys, we just spent the entire day going between Custer State Park and Wind Cave. So we went through Custer State Park, which was absolutely amazing. This is all in South Dakota. Looks like your horns could cause me significant damage. We tried to get down to Wind Cave for the last tour of the day. But unfortunately, the road was closed and we had to take a detour, so we got there too late. So now we are right between Wind Cave and a place called Hot Springs in South Dakota. We have a storm coming in with wind, like 40 mile an hour winds, which isn't terrible, and some rain. So before it gets too dark, it is 5.30, we got about an hour of daylight left. We wanna to try to find a decent boondocking spot so we have a place to kinda of have some shelter from the storm. And I thought that I would show you how we set up for a windstorm because it's something that we deal with rather frequently. Hey there. Hey there, friend. Hello. Wind Cave National Park has a campground and unfortunately they didn't have any cell service at all and that's something we kind of need. We also couldn't figure out the pricing. Uh, the website says that during the season I believe it's like $18 per night but off season it's like $9 a night. But no one specified what's the off season. So we jumped on iOverlander and we found one of the only what I'd consider decent boondocking spots. It's off of a forest service road and we're getting really close. So it looks like we're gonna take this right. So that's it's been a nice smooth dirt road, but sometimes these forest service roads get pretty rough. So far so good. These are some of the times that we get uh, frustrated, maybe impatient, because we could get out here and have it not work out at all. I Overlander reviews are nice because it said that there was some cell service up here, but that doesn't necessarily mean it. And uh, we also may not even be able to get to where the campsite is. And then also sometimes the spot is just taken. So it's a bit of a gamble and considering we have now about 50 minutes of daylight left, it means if this doesn't work out, we're going to be scrambling to go somewhere else. We could just pull over on the side of the road, but we don't really like to do that because we could end up getting a knock on the door that says, hey, what are you doing here? With the night approaching and high wind advisory with possible rain, I'm really hoping that it's gonna work out because I don't wanna be going anywhere in high winds and rain. So it looks like our spot is close, except there's no road to it. Google's saying walk. So it gives me this pin and then the little dotted line. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. All right, so I see a two track right here. So this is one of the great things about a truck camper is if I get up there and it doesn't work out, I can back down the hill. I don't have to deal with the trailer. And this is all like grazing pastures for cows and actually bison. It looks fairly well worn. It doesn't look like we're the first ones here. Hopefully we're not going to scratch our camper with all of the branches. Yeah, there's lots of them. When I'm going up steep hills like this, not for traction, but for gearing. I'm gonna to switch to four low. I'm gonna give it a minute. All right, it's in four low. And the nice thing about this is now I don't even really have to do much with the throttle. It'll just creep up the hill. So I think that's the worst of it. I'm gonna put the truck back in the two wheel drive. All right. Looks nice and flat up here. These branches are awfully low, but they look fairly flimsy. We get scratches all the time, pretty normal. 
All right, this is looking more promising. It's nice and open. Uh, with windstorms, I don't really like camping under trees because of branches coming off or trees falling. And I don't know if you can see that, but those clouds are moving pretty fast. This is exactly where the guy was camping. Looks like it's right up here. So one of the other things we do is we like to watch cell service and Sasha usually tests the internet speed as we drive so that we can find the optimum spot. So I'm going to test the speed right now and it's still connecting. So let's oh, see. Oh, that's better. Uh, we'll see. High ping. Well, that's not great, but it's usable. Yeah. We'll we see also if have our AT&T, which might work, but we're not sure yet. We'll see if there's a better spot. Oh, that's not great. <laughs> this is pretty long. So let's drive up a little bit. Sometimes all we have to do is literally move like uh, 50 feet and it will be better. Oh, look at the sky. It's beautiful. So there's a spot here. Looks like people camp here. You want to test the internet again? Sure. I really like that spot. It is nice. But I also don't know if I want to be under the trees. Yeah, that's true. Let's see what the internet is. Uh, it's a little bit better. Ah, uh, look at that. That's pretty good. 10, 11? 11? Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know if I want to camp under the trees. Not yeah, with I think wind coming. Trees well, we, in the windstorm? That's a bad idea. We found that if we have like four or five megabits of internet, uh, it's pretty good. And our AT&T might work. But let me go check this site out. So I want to say the down speed is really good, but the up oh, the upload is, is terrible. pretty horrible. So let's maybe not stay here. Let me go check the site real quick. So I always like to double check what I'm doing. I could drive right up here. I'm not going to have a fire, that's for sure. With the wind coming, I don't like these branches. I, I don't want something to fall on me. A lot of dead trees around here. 40 miles an hour isn't terrible, but it's certainly enough to have a branch land on us. And that is something that as full timers, I can't have happen. It's too risky. I, I actually like it. It goes, it goes up there a little bit, but I just don't like the idea of the trees around me. I would rather, if we have an open spot, I'd rather do that. Another trick that we've learned is on Google Maps. I go here, I change the layer to satellite and like you can see this is the road we took and let's see so here we are and let's see so it looks like the road continues down here so there's another clearing but i would say it's getting late enough yeah. we just need a place for the night let's just go play it stay in the clearing sure is that cool with you yeah right. sounds good we're at the end of the road here and I think I'm gonna do a three point turn and back up. And this is where our little Halo View camera comes in. Let me see if I can make this more visible for you. So I use my mirrors over there and the camera, which I love, it's so clear. I'll just back right in here. Make sure my wheels aren't gonna hit anything. One of the other things I get cautious with is this is fairly tall grass and because we have a diesel, our exhaust system can get extremely hot. So whenever we park in a grassy area, I always look underneath and make sure it's not gonna catch on fire. Just a little spark with all this wind and dry grass and it would go whoosh. So we have a little clearing right here, which is probably where the guy who posted that on iOverlander camped. And I would say this is good enough. And one of the other little tricks we have as you see this, it's a bubble level. I got the camper really close to perfectly level and then I put this on. And you can see we're a little bit off. Sometimes I can fix that by just moving a little bit. I would say we're off the road. It's good enough. Good enough? Perfect. Good enough.
we're hungry. We haven't eaten. I'm starving. I'm starving too. Yeah. But we still got to kind of get the camper set up and ready for the wind. It's not too bad, but I'm going to show you the process that we go through when we are expecting high winds. Most of the time, I want to say Scott <laughs> does yeah. most of it. And I either prepare food or clean up in the camper, set she'll, everything up. She'll go in, she'll get the Aldi turned on because it's going to drop into the 40s tonight. It's already 52 out right now. Um, and probably start making some food. It only takes me like maybe 10 or 15 minutes to get everything prepared. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So come along and I'll show you. And I always set my parking brake. Just in case. Just in case. Who's Justin? Just in case, he's my friend. All right, this looks pretty good. Really cool spot. I like it up here. So I like to climb underneath and make sure I don't have any smoke coming off my exhaust pipe. Actually, the grass isn't even touching it. Right here and right there are probably the hottest sparks. The rest of it is tucked up in the frame rail. So this looks like a pretty good spot. I'm gonna be outside for a few minutes setting everything up so I can keep an eye out for smoke. It is a real issue. People have set grasslands on fire because they drove their diesel truck through. So the first thing I do is I want to put all my jacks down. We have these dually brackets, which are actually nice for the wind because they're a little bit wider. We have lots of these little cow poop landmines. I'm going to get this out. All right, the jacks are extended, the dually brackets are out. I just need to get my, my jack control, I'll turn this on. Hopefully Sasha will get some food going. We keep this one down a little bit and we use it as a step so that we don't have to open our bikes very often. So I'm gonna run all of them down. And this one right here is gonna touch first. It's not going to touch much sooner than the others, but it's just something that I pay attention to. Boy, jack legs are slow when it's cold out. I do have some jack pads, but for this, just for one night to stop the wind, I'm not going to use them. I'll keep them strapped up right here. Uh, this is really just to keep the camper from swaying while we're sleeping. It's a little annoying. It tends to wake us up. All right, that's just touching. I'm gonna get the other side down. All right, a little tension on there. And what I found, I gotta do this one-handed here. I'll do both of these together. I'm gonna try at least. I'm gonna stick the camera in my jacket. And then I just wait for him to touch. So that other side touched first. I peeked through this gap where the cab and the camper are, and I can see that bracket coming up. And it's touching right there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. All right, so now all four corners are touching and I'm gonna use lift all. There's some debate about this, but my truck squats about three or four inches between here and here. I'm not gonna lift the camper up enough to take it off the truck. I'm gonna take some of the pressure off of the truck so that I have more weight on the legs, which means the camper will sway less. And sometimes if the camper is crooked from side to side, I can, I can level it just a little bit, you know, just a couple degrees. Sometimes it helps water flow. Oh, the wind. All right, so that's probably good enough. Just a little extra for good luck. Now we've lost our step right here. So I keep a stool that's covered in dust. Bang off the dust. I put a stool right here. And in the past, I have had problems with the wind blowing the stool away. So I Go into my trusty box of goodies here. Grab a bungee cord. 
You can tell we've been driving on some, some dusty roads. And I just wrap, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a bungee cord. Around a couple times. Just like that. Now it can't blow away. And in the morning or later tonight when I come out, I know it's gonna be there. We could of course put the stairs down, but because we do this full time, it's usually just not worth our time. We've gotten really good at climbing up and down. I apologize if I seem like I'm rushing. We're hungry, we're very tired. And I wanted to record all of this, but of course it's extra work. But I'm just trying to get it done. She's cooking. And uh, a couple more things. In the middle of the night, we get really frustrated with, with two things. Sometimes, like we just drove up here, we'll get sticks on the roof and they go ba-bang, ba-bang in the wind. And at three in the morning, I don't want to climb up on the roof. So whenever I drive through low hanging areas, I have a habit of going up and checking that, which I'm gonna do. And we also have our little vent. And we need it for cooking right now. Uh, but actually she just turned it on. But what happens is in the middle of the night, it'll go ba-bang, ba ba-bang, ba-bang, ba-bang. It drives us nuts. Then I have to come out here and close it, which it's really high. I put my hand underneath there, I put my foot on there, I climb up and I, I, I push it closed. It just clicks closed. I'm gonna run up on the roof right now and try to clear off any debris. I feel like I probably got something up there because of the low hanging trees. Let's see. Yes. We have lots of sticks. So I just, I just take them, I throw them off. They roll around, they make noise. And I also like to check for damage, any kind of like broken covers. I've gotten pretty good at gauging what I can drive under, but I usually break something off. Especially stuff like this, it'll sit here and go, like this in the wind and I can hear it in the camper and it'll wake us up. Sasha tends to wear earplugs but I like to be on guard so I almost never wear earplugs so small sounds tend to wake me up including these little sticks. I actually got a lot more sticks than I expected. We've done it a hundred times The worst one was one day I got a big stick stuck under here and it wrapped around and snapped off, but it, it didn't break the panel off. I also try to be really careful with the, uh, the skylight there. So that looks pretty good. The sun is going down, starting to get that nice glow, starting to lose my hat. So a couple weeks ago, we did a video whew, while we were in Badlands. And that was like 55 mile an hour wind. So this is kind of pretty, pretty gentle. 40, 45 mile an hour gusts, pretty tolerable. Um, we just don't like when the camper rocks. So that's where we put the jacks down. We almost never put the jacks down except for wind. All right, back down. So I've gotten a couple questions in the past about this. It's not really worth making a whole video about. These are just uh, used Thule bike racks for the roof and I drilled some holes in the aluminum and uh, put some stainless steel U-bolts on it. And it's been on here for two years and I actually stand on this, not out here, but I'll stand like right here. And I got my, my antenna. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm gonna put my antenna up. So little stupid things that we run into. This bungee cord, which I use to secure these wires, if I don't tighten it, it'll, it'll do this in the wind and we can hear it. So I always make sure that I, I clip it up like that. I know some of this stuff is obvious, but 
We get a lot of questions about it, so I figured we'd go over it now. So at one point we drove off with this thing still up and it bent the pole. And you can see right here it wears, it got really hard to put up, but it still works. I'm not gonna replace it. So I think that's pretty much it. And I smell food. I think Sasha's already cooking. I will say this is a big reason why we do this is every once in a while we find this awesome spot. Windy or not, doesn't matter. All to ourselves. We just drove in a couple miles before we started recording. I would say we're about seven miles from the nearest town and uh, we still have cell service. We have all of our water, propane, we have food. We're all by ourselves in this beautiful location. We love doing this, it's great. So I think I'm gonna go in. My fingers are frozen. I hear food. Oh, you're cooking. I'm actually reheating our leftovers, so. No, I was right. gonna say, that was awfully fast. I don't <laughs> I've been out there for like 10 minutes and she's already got food on the stove. Normally you gotta like prep everything. But we had leftovers. The magic of the truck camping. So this is just a simple meal. Rice with some chicken with some zucchini and portobello mushrooms. It's pretty good. And my favorite part is this, which is like marinated green onions. It only takes them like maybe five minutes to get all marinated. I'm not sure how to explain that. So it's a little bit of white vinegar with some salt. Leave it for maybe five to ten minutes and it's delicious. It's delicious. It takes something that's relatively bland and mm -hmm. it adds these little little punches of flavor. We love it. We learned yeah. that from uh, what Hello that thing? Fresh. We used to do Hello Fresh. Actually when we were preparing to leave we were so busy we ordered Hello Fresh because it meant that our food was shipped to us. Wasn't the greatest food, but we got some great recipe ideas and we took pictures of all of the recipe cards and we have them in our phones. It's pretty good. So that's what we do. And now the camper is nice and sturdy. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps it from rocking all night. And when we're done cooking, I will go out and close this little flap on the exhaust. That's the last thing that drives me nuts. <laughs> click, 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 click. Oh, and we always forget about it until like one in the morning. Oh yeah. And I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, stop. But it does We've got it down to a science now. We're pretty good at this. So I think that's it. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. I always forget this thing.